when I got, when I saw that there was no heartbeat, like my heart just dropped because I knew that I wasn't going to be one. And I had to be strong for you. And I couldn't show that emotion because you were already freaking out. And I was just like, okay, just keep it in and don't let go because she needs you. But in my heart, I'm like, man, this sucks. All right, look, losing a loved one is hard. Losing any death is not easy to deal with in general. And it's even harder when you have a miscarriage. And that's exactly what happened to us. Uh, we lost our baby. If you're not, uh, if you've followed the P- PM podcast at all and you've followed us in our lives, you know that some time ago we were pregnant. And then uh, we lost the baby at like thir- almost 13 weeks. weeks. No, it was 12. It was 11. It was 12. It died at 11. It, okay, fair. It died at 11. <laughs> Don't argue with we me. We went in there at 12 weeks. Um, I mean, we, but okay, we're, we're going to get into the story basically of not conception, but, but like we're going to talk about um, what happened. And how it happened and the really weird medical thing that kind of came from that. And we're going to kind of dive into that a little bit more and kind of get my take. Because I, really, I haven't really opened up about it. No, he hasn't. Um, I, I don't like to talk about stuff like that when it comes to death. Their emotions. I just I lock it down and I don't talk about it. Are you and picking your toe? No. I'm That's like, gross, man. I'm playing, hey, they love my toes. I, they don't so. like you picking them. I wasn't picking them. I was just like rubbing my skin on my toe. I don't know. That's weird to say on the mic. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, but before we do that, we're going to talk about something that's a little more comedic. Or should we just dive into the sad shit and then Did you end plan it with comedic? something comedic? I did, but I don't know if I should talk about it. Like, should we just go into the sad shit and then talk about the happy shit, like the funny stuff afterwards to kind of lighten up? Or should we just dive straight into like the funny stuff and then well, just... I'm curious, so dive in. To the sad shit. To the funny stuff. How are we going to end it? Because we, we can't end it on a sad note. We're not going to. We're going to talk about how we got over it. We we pulled ourselves out of the grief. We're gonna end with hope. Well, make sure you're talking into your mic so they can actually hear you. We're gonna end with hope. Okay, hope. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> Star Wars reference. Sorry. Um, no, we'll do we'll do the funny shit at the end. That way, it's like we're not leaving on a sad note because this could wow. get this could get dark. Sorry, this is a really this is like the worst tr- cliffhanger trailer teaser ever. Whatever. Just if you if you don't want to see this hear the sad shit, just scroll to like the last. 15 minutes of the episode and then we'll we'll talk about that but let's dive straight in to the to the okay the sad shit so do you want to start from dude you are the director here i'm the director okay so we're gonna start from like you being pregnant let's talk about that it was miserable <laughs> and guys i don't get sick I no. didn't puke at all from morning sickness. Not a single time. You felt nauseous a couple of times, but it wasn't like... But my gosh. At the time, it felt hard to justify doing it more than once. I honestly considered like, this is so awful. I may not want to do it again. <laughs> God, I hated it. You really did. You were so miserable. And I mean, looking back now, like it is faded from memory. I cannot remember the specifics as to why it's so difficult. So I'm already over it. It's like why you felt miserable. and Like I didn't even have a baby and I am willing to do it again. You know? So it's like every woman who has a baby, of course she's going to do it again. She got the reward. She sees the worth in it. Yeah. Um, So we went in at eight weeks. It was more like seven, I seven think. Seven weeks. So we went into the doctor at seven weeks, and we heard the heartbeat for the first time. Um, and the doctor said, you know, everything's great, looking good. 
uh, come back in. Actually, and she said specifically, it's a really strong heartbeat. Yeah, she's like, really strong heartbeat, really good. We're looking good. Keep up, keep healthy, and, uh, you know, just keep going. We're like, okay. And uh, so we come back, we wait, and right around 10 to 11 weeks in, and Ellen will attest to this, she felt noticeably different. No, no, actually, no. It was right at 11 weeks. Okay. To the day that they told us it had died. So walk me through that as far as like what you were felt previously and like the day you knew kind of instinctually. So like we, we'll were... talk about the test first. So the day we took the test, I was just, I did, I felt off. I knew before I even took the test I'm like, this This is what it has to be. We've been trying for a year. There's really, this is weird. I've never felt like this. It has to be this. Because I'd gone out to dinner with my family, and I had a nasty, greasy bacon cheeseburger for dinner. Oh, yeah. And I just was like, mm, this is not sitting well. Yeah, you felt sick. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, gosh. Now I got to go take this test. So I got... <laughs> A, a two pack of pregnancy tests and I brought it home and I was looking for my husband. Oh God. And <laughs> he was nowhere to be found. So I walk up the stairs and this son of a bitch is taking a bath. The one time I take a bath. I never, Literally the only time he's ever taken I a bath. I have never taken a bath. I hate baths <laughs> with a passion. And I just had a really long day and I was kind of sore and I was like, and I've been to the gym and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for a soak. And I did. And then the one day I freaking do it. And she just walks in. <laughs> what you did. Like, you remember that episode from Friends where, like, everybody's in the bathroom and Chandler's just like, oh, <laughs> well, God. Yeah, this is, that was me. He's like, oh, hi, Bubbles. Like, but it's okay because I got my boat because I didn't have a boat. So anyway, what did I say when I walked in? You're like, you ready for your life to change? I was like, okay. <laughs> Not today, thank you. And I was like, uh, sure. I was confused. And then she showed me the, like, or no, I didn't even see the test. I was just like, are you are you pregnant? I, no, I pulled out the test and you're like, oh. Oh, yeah, I didn't even ask. I was just like, oh, that kind of life-changing thing. Okay. And then you did your thing on the stick and then it tested positive. So, but, so explain like how you knew that something was wrong. At 11 weeks. Okay, so leading up to it, like, I wasn't necessarily nauseous unless I got hungry. And, of course, when you're pregnant, you're hungry, like, every two hours. You're hungry a lot, yeah. Yeah, so you you don't have an appetite, so you don't want to eat, but it will get worse if you don't eat something. Right. So that's where I was getting nauseated was every time... I failed to eat. And so pretty much I was eating pizza like twice a day because for some reason that w that was all I could stomach. And so on the 11, on the first day of week 11, it was, I believe a sun, it was, it was April 30th. I don't remember what day it was, but I went, four hours without eating didn't think about it and it didn't bother me and that was the first day i think where i sat down and it felt like something was weighing on my bladder and just everything felt less severe and I thought it was because I was entering my second trimester within the next few days. So I thought things were just gradually dying off to make way for whatever was to come next. Right. And so a few days after that, it was the day before the doctor's appointment where yeah. we found out what had happened. I went maternity shopping with my mother. And I had felt off for a couple days, just different and... I wasn't afraid or anything, but I definitely voiced the question to my mom. I go, Mom, what happens if I lose it? And she looked at me and she goes, there's no reason to think that way. You can't yeah. think negatively about this. 
Just enjoy the good parts because the likelihood is low that you'll lose it. Which is why it was especially hard for her when I called her the next day. Yeah. And in the relationship with your mom has kind of been estranged for, had been estranged for four years at the time. Yeah, we were gradually getting back to having a good relationship. Trying to, and yeah. but but and we'll get into the good side of like the the positives aspects of losing the baby because uh, mending the relationship the, with her family was the actually silver a big, lining. There's nothing positive. Well, there's there's positives you can take from every situation, and that's what I mean. I'm not saying there's a positive. I don't want to. I don't want to associate the okay, word fine. positive. Okay, so with a, it. a silver lining, if you will, to yeah. A silver lining that came from it anyway um so okay so we go in the next day and uh the nurse we go into the ultrasound room and she starts going around and she's like oh i can't find it and she says oh this is normal though like it's it's not yeah. it's not that big of a deal like if and we can't then, find it we'll just get the ultrasound and we'll no we'll just probe so they usually go in the tummy, but if they can't find it, if it's being a little stinker, they'll actually probe you from from the canal, and then they'll find it that, that way. That was the first appointment. Yeah. They didn't probe me this time. I know, because they found it. So eventually they found it, and the I saw... Okay, okay. You saw something different than I did, so... So Ellen didn't see it, and... The nurse hadn't said anything, and I was looking up at the screen. Yeah, we just didn't hear it. I was in the no, you didn't. Go, like we were I, let me let me explain my side first. <laughs> okay, so uh, for those of you that don't know me super well, I was in the medical field for about a year and a half or two years, and I'd been around machinery, and I know what to look for, and as far as ultrasounds, and I know like where it'll be at on the screen, and so I I see this little like bean, and that's the baby. And uh, I don't see movement. I don't see the heart be like I did previously. And I I noticed the nurse starting to like take images and tap on her computer and try to re readjust in different angles and resize and and usually when that happens it's a negative thing. And Ellen was still kind of just sitting there breathing and. Uh, the nurse kind of looked over at me and saw that I'd already, I already know, like there's no heartbeat. And I had to sit there and, and look at my wife, knowing that I knew the information that was about to be said. And, uh, the nurse kind of just takes a deep breath and she says, sweetie, I can't find the heartbeat. <laughs> And Ellen's exact response was what? And then she like reaches over and grabs my arm and I can't say anything because I already know. And I'm just kind of sitting there being like, it's okay. It's okay. I'm trying to re calm her down. And she's like, well, let's go get the actual machine to, to test for the, to make sure. And let's get the doctor in here. So she walks out and she goes, gets the doctor and the doctor, says, yeah, we're going to find this heartbeat. It's not gone. So She did not say that. Well, she just says, we're going to go find this heartbeat. And she takes you to the next room, down the hall to the left, and it's, they have this little tiny machine, and they're like, and they're... You're mixing all this up. Oh, my God. I don't care. Anyway, did the doctor come in? Oh, she came in and looked at the pictures, and that was it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. This is second appointment. Whatever. So the doctor comes in the room. Sorry. I. It all kind of blended together for me. Anyway, so the doctor comes in the room and she starts looking at the, she didn't say anything yet. Like she just says, you okay? And then she, you know, Ellen's just kind of like, not really, but sure. <laughs> like, like Ellen's exact response was, uh, yeah, sure. And then the doctor's like, yeah, of course you're good. Of course you're not okay, but it's fine. It's polite Midwest slang for, I'm sorry. <laughs> So uh, the doctor starts looking at the monitor and starts like getting in there and, and she's trying to look at everything. And then she just kind of sits back and she goes, I'm so sorry, sweetie. And didn't even say that like the baby was gone. Didn't say like, we didn't say we lost it. Didn't say like, didn't acknowledge the death. She just, the only thing she said was, I'm sorry. And then she said, we need to get, we need to get some blood samples to see what happened. And uh, we'll go from there. 
and that was that was it and uh ellen just kind of sat there in shock like what the fuck just happened and i was just i didn't know what to think or say and i just kind of sat there and held her hand and watched her as she kind of realized that she wasn't gonna get to be a mom yet and that like floored me because I know that she wanted it more than anything and I know that I was ready for it and it uh it sucked because I know that I'm I'm built to be a dad and we were so ready and uh you know we lost it and that was really hard to acknowledge In the moment, it's still hard to acknowledge now. And I don't want her to blame herself because it's not her fault. It's uh, it's just one of those things that happens and it wasn't the right time and we weren't ready. I guess. (laughs) But, uh, you know, we would have made it work. So anyway, uh, cut to two weeks later, three weeks later. We're not going to talk about the surgery. We are. So when you're that far along and the embryo is that big, they have to do what they call a DNC, a DNC. And which is where they have to go in and they have to scrape the uterine walls to remove, Uh. to remove the fetus, the embryo, And everything in there. And what was particularly... The reason they had to be so thorough. The reason they had to be so thorough and and why Ellen was a particular case is because she was one out of 1,200 women that have what is called a molar pregnancy. And what a molar pregnancy is, for those of you that are listening and don't know, is when two sets of chromosomes fertilize a single egg. So... Two sperm. Right. So the the chromosomes start to replicate over and over and over again. And there's two sets. So there's two sperms in there that are building in one egg and it basically becomes a mole or a cancerous, it could become a cancerous cell. Yeah. And so they had to be so thorough because if they don't get everything, she could get cancer from it. It could become invasive and embed into the uterus giving and then the worst case scenario out of that would have to be a full hysterectomy where she can't have kids ever. And so uh, they planned this surgery. It was like two weeks later or a week later. Well, I mean, they didn't exactly know what it was at that point. But, I mean, yeah. once she got in there, she could tell. She she figured it, what right. it was. Yeah. So we, ha- she, we go into the surgery. I think it was like a week later, maybe two. Like it wasn't very no, long. It was like two days later. Was it really? Yeah, I don't think I would have been comfortable. I think it was a week. I really do think it was like a week. It could be wrong. Because I remember having a couple days to talk about it and us trying to like grieve and shit. <laughs> Are you arguing All with right, me about fine, it? Three days, whatever. I'm just... Anyway. Um, so we go in and I am already a wreck because I don't like... I'm a very strong individual. I don't cry. I suck it up and take most things like a man. And uh, there's only one weakness that I have, and it's the woman sitting across from me. And uh, I get nervous every time anything has to happen to her, whether it's surgery, drugs, medication, whatever whatever she's going through, I I lose my shit over. And so we go. she goes in for the surgery, and the doctor's like, yeah, it'll be fine. She'll be good. So I'm in the waiting room and it's like a three hour procedure. Like it's a long time and they put her under and they have to go in and clean everything out and then take her back. So, uh, anyway, the surgery happens and I get called into the consultation room, which is where the doctor gets out of surgery. And then they, she comes and explains what, what happened, how it went, where things are at. And I was like, okay. so I go in the room and she starts telling me that Ellen, uh, is good, but she lost a significant amount of blood. And so we have to keep, uh, we have to keep track of her hemoglobin levels to make sure that she, cause she lost two units of blood 
And when she said that, I almost cried in front of the doctor because your body, for those of you that are in the medical field, you'll know this, For your, your body only has eight units. That's it. Your body has eight units of blood. And she lost two. That's not all that much. You lost two liters of blood. Okay. So like a two liter bottle. You lost that but much. But don't you die at like five? You die at, yeah, like, yeah. Well, you don't you die, but you, you, you'll need, oh, if you lose five, yeah, you die. Yeah. Yeah, because you only have three left at that point. But so, so she lost a significant amount of blood. And so they put her on like fluids and they brought her out. And so when I saw her, she was as white as a sheet. Uh, I mean, like the inside of this mug by her feet. That's how white she was. I felt normal. And uh, so she gets up and I'm just sitting there and my anxiety is so high because I just, she told me how much blood she lost. And then I saw my wife, this just little, little girl just in a bed, like half awake and drowsy and trying to sip on juice and can't find the straw. And it's just like, and she doesn't that. even and she doesn't even remember me being there and I was in the room for like 30 minutes before she even realized that I was there or can remember that I was there. She was talking to me but she wasn't like there if that makes any sense. And uh and so she goes to the bathroom and they're in there for a very long time. And I mean a very long time. And it's because that she still had some blood that was coming out and she felt like she was going to throw up in the bathroom and she almost fell in the bathroom and the nurse was like trying to keep her up and all that. So then she comes out in a wheelchair and I'm like, Oh God, like this is not great. And she goes, well, she almost fell. We need to keep her for longer. And I'm like, Oh my God. And I'm, I'm just a wreck. <laughs> and so I'm like, my stomach hurts. So then I start getting sick. Like I start getting nauseous because I'm so worried for her that like, I'm getting sick and I stand up and I, I feel like I'm going to pass out. And I'm like, I have to step out for a second. And she's like, don't pass out in my ER. I, I got to take care of your wife. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's fair. You were kind of being a little needy. I wasn't being needy. I was worried about you. So anyway, we do that and, uh, I'm fine. And then she gets released. And then on the way home, she starts feeling dizzy and feels she's going to pass out and she feels nauseous. And then she just throws up everything that she had in her stomach, which was just jello, I think. Jello and like two bottles of juice. Yeah. So she just up chucks it all on the way home. An and apple, strawberry, chaotic mess. So I'm sitting there and she calls her mom and her mom's like, we're coming over, which by the way, that does not happen. Her mom is well, never That's the said. second time she'd done that. Yeah. Her mom's like, oh yeah. Well, we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. But. So her mom comes over and then we're, I'm just trying to take care of her and she's trying to get some rest. And Did we have pizza that night? Yeah, that was the night we had pizza. Yeah. And Sarah came over and she brought me Teddy Grahams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I still can't find now because of COVID or whatever. So. I need more Teddy Grahams. So, yeah. And that was it. So the next couple of days, Ellen had a really hard time. Mm-hmm. kind of coping with everything cried every day because she knew that she just felt different and she could feel it and she looked so forward to it and that like the hard problem is that when she cries I don't because I have to be that rock I have to be the guy that's there for her. and it would kind of put a strain in our relationship because she wasn't able to see how much pain I was in because I didn't show it. And were you in pain? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Then what you, you lied what you to mean? me about it at the time. I did. Cause I had to be, I had to be strong for you. Like I told you a million times that it wasn't what I needed though. Yeah. But you also don't need a whiny crying husband who, isn't there when you need him and I'm there like I'm here and I was there for you at the time and like if I cry if I just if I'm the one that cries then you don't have a shoulder to cry on and I just I have to be that don't you remember though how you were you were like just don't cry 
Just don't do it. It made me feel like yeah, like I was the was only wrong. one that cared. Yeah, I know. And I was trying to get you to not cry because it really was just like breaking my heart. Like, because I know you wanted it and I wanted it. And seeing you cry just like made it harder on me to bottle it up. And then to see you stifling a yawn is much worse than just yawning, <laughs> by the way. Uh, no, like to see you like in pain and crying and it just made it like unbearable. And uh, I don't know, like it was, it was rough. And there's still days where it's like, I, I get a little teary, teary eyed. Happened today, actually. Me too. You got teary eyed today? It's miss, like pregnancy loss remembrance day is what it's called. Is that today? Yes. Yeah. So, oh, is that the thing at the hospital that they were going to do? More no, it's a year from now. Never mind. Uh, it's today is National Pregnancy Loss Remember or what? Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, I got teary eyed because I got home and opened the mailbox and there was like a oh that came today. Yeah. It's a it was a little box of infamil goodies. It was like a cute little baby on the front, and I'm like, oh. And my first thought, like I said, and I, I, I screwed myself over because my first thought was like, oh, I don't need that. And I was like, oh, I don't need that. And it just like, it hit me. Well, today little. also would have been eight months. Yeah. Yeah. We'd have had the, we would have been your third trimester. So we're still getting over it. Like, as you guys can probably tell, like it's, uh, and I don't want you to feel like I don't care. And I guess that's kind of what... That's exactly what you did, and I told you that's what you were doing. I know. It's just hard for me to cope with things like that. Because hmm. you know that I wanted it. Like you do. Don't you? Half the time you go, should we put off kids? Only because we have other things we want to do in life, and if it's not... I will not put you through a DNC again. Well... Like, if it happens... We, we can't... No, 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 I'm saying like, if it happens again, well, hold for hold for plane. <laughs> I don't know or whatever. If it happens again, like I don't want to put you through that again. Honey, you can't guarantee that won't happen again. No, but if it does happen again, do you want to try a third time? The odds of it happening three times are ludicrous. I just I don't know if I could do that. If I have to watch you go through that surgery again, uh, I'm, I'm probably tapped on that i'll adopt but like i don't want to would you shut up you god dang car driving through my freaking anyway um <laughs> so loud um yeah no i i don't want you to feel like i didn't care it was just hard for me to cope with and i didn't know how else to cope besides just lock it down like just bury it like I just, I take things that I'm upset about or I'm mad about or that make me want to cry and I just take them and I put them in a little ball and then I bottle them deep down inside and then one day eventually I'll die <laughs> and it'll all be fine. <laughs> like I just, I, I don't, I can't deal with stuff like that. I don't do death well. I didn't do my, my grandma just died and I didn't even cope with that really well. I kind of did, but like I still didn't show him any, much emotion. So obviously your coping is much less healthy than mine. A hundred percent. It's not healthy at all, but I'm also an anxious little ball of energy. So mine is displacing hope. What that, do you mean? That's probably not a good way to describe it. No, elaborate. Mine is putting hope on something that really is your own theory. There's really nothing to it other than me hoping this is the truth. Oh. Oh, you're talking about like... Yes. The soul. So the reason... I've been able to cope with it is because about a week after the surgery... 
they did the test on the fetus and told me exactly what had happened. They told me about the molar pregnancy. And for me, that was a light switch. Like, I stopped crying immediately after that, didn't I? Pretty much. You had a couple of days. Mother's Day got you, but... Yeah, but like... Well, that was before they told me. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I so, so pretty much the day they told me what happened, yeah. they told me it was inviable from conception. Right. It was never going to be able to survive. It was a triploid. It had 69 chromosomes. It couldn't survive. So in my mind, being raised Christian, yeah, I put that as God knew that it was not a viable vessel and didn't send the soul down. That it was empty the whole time. Right. That the baby didn't die. That the baby that's meant for me is still waiting <sighs> yep. for a body that can handle it. So knowing that, knowing it truly wasn't my fault. Like every, most miscarriages aren't a woman's fault no matter what they've done. Right. Like this, this really wasn't my. There's nothing that, there's. It's, yeah. Wasn't my fault. And I have convinced myself, yeah, that. The soul was not lost. Yeah. And that's how I got over it. And I don't know how healthy that is either. I really don't. But yeah. I don't know if I ever, I don't know if I got over it. I don't know. Are you serious? I don't know. How do you, how do you get over that? Like, I don't, like if you, I mean, do I cry about it? Do I still like, do I get upset about it? No, not, a, not nearly as much, but. I don't know. I don't feel like I ever grieved over it. I was like, oh, this happened. Next thing. And I bottled it down. Like, yes. I took I took like a minute. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> I I grieved for about 15 minutes because Ellen was home and sleeping. And I walked outside, called my grandpa, poured some whiskey. And I walked outside and I called my grandpa and told him. And just like what my grandpa always does, he goes... I tell, I thought, okay. So I walk outside when we get home and I call my grandpa and I say, grandpa, uh, I lost, uh, we lost the baby and he didn't say anything for a second. He goes, well, time to try again. And Except we still can't try again. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, just be strong for that little girl. And I was like, I will. And he's like, all right, I love you, bud. Love you too. That was it. Like, he's he's just one of those guys where he's like, cowboy the fuck up. Like, you got to be a man. You got to st- You got to be there. You got to be strong. You got to be there for. Her. And I was. And I tried to be. And I think my way of coping was trying to just shut it out and ignore it. And I can't do that. And it's not healthy. And I know it's not healthy. But I didn't know what else to do because I just like. I saw you and like, I just see this little helpless person that I'm supposed to take care of. And I don't know how to do that because I, I don't, I didn't go through what you did. I didn't feel what you felt. And I'm just like, just, it's like one of those things where it's like, no, no, I don't want to acknowledge, acknowledge me, but no, like I was just trying to fight it. And eventually I just fought it for so long that eventually you got over it. The, probably the healthiest way possible and I was just like no oh it's over okay, what hopeful God. denial yeah no not hopeful denial like you were just hopeful I that- hope that what I believe is correct I don't know yeah that's healthier than I mean I don't know it, it's kind of denial it's denial if it's completely wrong yeah and it's hopeful because there's no proof well then what's the best way to move forward how do I heal well, what do you believe? Let's start there. Do you believe our baby's still waiting on us? That that this wasn't lost? I don't know. Something was lost. But I don't know if it was a soul. Like I don't I don't know. Like what, what Maybe is... you need to see the pictures of what it was. No, I've seen the pictures. It... I've looked it up. How can that be alive? Right. And that's kind of, well, and I'm, but I'm, I'm, so I'm hopefully agnostic and I think you are too. I don't think you're Christian. 
steps from what I, but we can get into that in another podcast. Well, the hopeful agnostic part of it is you're hoping I, there's something bigger, but you're not. I sure. was raised to believe this. I hope it's true, but the yeah. likelihood is right. So, I think for me, like your swallowing is very loud. Sorry, <laughs> I think for me. I don't know. You don't know what you... You have had five months to think. Just think about what you think. When it comes to the... I blocked it out. Like, I literally took that part of my life and I was like, this never happened. And I'm moving forward. Like, it's all... Never look back, essentially. It's like, this happened. Okay, move forward. That's how I handle a lot of our shit in our lives. That's how we've made it so far. <laughs> You're so broken. Yeah, probably, <laughs> but thanks. You know it. I know I'm broken, but I don't know, like, what else to do. Like, like I lost... Like, all I can do is tell you how I did it. All I've ever wanted was a kid. That's not all you've ever wanted. That's what I've wanted. I know that I'm... I know that I'd be a good dad. I know it. Like, I know deep down in my heart, I look at kids and I'm like, I want a kid. I'm going to be a great dad. And everyone that's ever met me says I'm a great dad or will be a great dad. You think I'll be a good dad. And I know that I'm I'm ready to be a dad. And I was so ready then. Like, when you told me you were pregnant and I we saw the test, like, I knew that I was ready. I've never been more ready for something in my life to take care of a little baby and when I when I got when I saw that there was no heartbeat like my heart just dropped because I knew that I wasn't going to be one and I had to be strong for you and I couldn't show that emotion because you were already freaking out and I was just like, okay, just keep it in and don't let go because she needs you. But in my heart, I'm like, man, this fucking sucks. It wasn't in your heart like, well, here's life kicking us in the pants again. Life has really kicked us in the pants. Every but, time but we... I, Every time we plan something, it doesn't work out. But I thought that was the one. I thought, you know, we'd get this and it'd be all right. <sighs> and it never is. It never is the first time or the but, second or the third, but not, not to put that voodoo into our lives. But yeah, so that's the first time I've cried over that. <clears throat> Uh, He'll sorry. cry for you, people, not for me. It was I was crying for you actually because I was thinking <laughs> about you. They they're just listening to this. They're just listening to us cope. That's essentially what this is. But I don't know, and I I know that I'm broken, and I know that like I know that the way I handle things isn't always healthy, but. I just, I I figured that this was the best way is to just move forward. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. Don't look back. It happened. Move forward. And I just kept telling myself that. And eventually it it was okay. So like, I don't. It's not okay forever. Like I'm okay forever. I'm okay. I I am. It's, I, 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 I wasn't crying because. I was crying because I don't get to be a dad yet. And that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be. It was just more of like, I was ready. And the world was just like, no, you're not. And it's like, that's why I hope there's, that's kind of why I'm like, I hope there's nothing. Like, I hope there's not a God because that's fucked up. It's like the one thing that I knew that I'm destined for. The one thing that I know that I will be good at. Period. No matter no matter how much I fail you or how much I fail anybody, is I will be a good dad. 
and that's like I just got bad luck though <laughs> so it's gonna happen it's, yeah. we're gonna have God, we have bad luck yeah we do but that's just that was gonna be part of it but see the next part the next step of coping was acknowledging what we learned a few weeks after that which was it was a x and a y sperm <laughs> yeah that was so, that was the funny aspect of it so the the really crazy thing in my mind and i know i know it's a saying that's not a sign because signs don't work like that but i'm pretty much like 90 90 percent convinced that the next time we try we're going to have fraternal twins it's like you didn't get it right the first time cool you get two at once yeah Boom. i yeah I, kn- <laughs> I know it's completely ridiculous to believe that but yeah. i'm gonna be pretty disappointed if that doesn't happen yeah. i'll be happy with one healthy one that's all i need yeah but but yeah like so we're gonna name them lincoln and lucy how cute is that they have to be twins lincoln lincoln <laughs> Link- lincoln, lincoln john, john von, von shields, shields. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's talk about the silver lining. So for the longest time, and I've talked about it on the podcast before, and I've made public apologies about this before and, and whatever, like the relationship between me and Ellen and her parents have been strained for quite some time for four years, really. Um and our entire marriage up until this point. Stop playing with your toes. I like playing with my toes, and they like me playing with my toes, so leave it alone. Anyway, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, it are it been kind of strained, and the the plus side to this whole thing was that it brought her mom in the picture again, and she got to experience me in a different light than she'd probably ever seen me before. And she was kind of forced to see me in that scenario because she was there for you and I was there. And I think it mended a lot of the shit that happened in the past. It's like, Oh, he's not this immature kid that I knew. It's like, he's, he's taking care of my little girl. And I, I really tried to. And so, you know, we started, it's like after that, we started trying to have dinners together or at least once a month we get together and go out and they'll pay one time and we'll pay another and really just started mending the relationship. And Ellen started going back over and hanging out with her family more. And we had uh, Mother's Day together, which was great. We had the whole family together and, and uh, you know, we're, we're doing the holidays which we did we did christmas i think last year for the first time with your mom christmas eve christmas eve we did so we did, we did christmas with her family and that was like the first time that we'd all been together in a long time yeah so um but this year like you know we're doing thanksgiving and we're doing christmas and it, we're starting to get back to more of a normalcy and hanging out with your grandma and your uncle and we went on a family trip with your family, which was. It was a weekend trip. It wasn't it, a full still, trip. Still, it was, it was a trip. Like we went somewhere. We went and hung out with your family. and I keep forgetting that happened. Right. So like, <laughs> you know, and but none of this would have happened, at least on the pace that it did, if we didn't lose the baby. Because we it was already starting to come about. And, you know, we were trying to put plans in place to. Uh, we were trying to put plans in place to get together and, and see each other, yeah. but losing the baby really just catapulted everything into like overdrive. I really don't think that, like, I think that contributed, but I think it was starting to even catapult when we told her, because you remember we were so scared. Yeah. And then you and told then her she and she cried she was like, and was happy and we're just like, oh, well, that this, turned out better. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is. Nice then yeah. best case scenario. Yeah, because we were worried she was going to be upset, and she wasn't at all. So, yeah, that she was, was more. Best she case. was more just thrilled, and so things started work. When we told her that we were pregnant, things just started coming around. And then when we lost it, that's when it was like, okay, yeah. like, we're going to be a part of this more now. And so yeah, 
yeah so that that's us losing the baby and that's what happened that's the whole story the whole truth and nothing but the truth i think mm-hmm. that's yeah it's everything so i didn't know you were still that broken up apparently we need to do some therapy not therapy just i don't talk about you stuff need to like figure this. it out this was therapy like mine's mine is i have my answer i know what's gonna make i've me got better. my answer i'm good are you sure i do i believe in what you believe because you didn't a few minutes ago. No, I do. I just, I don't, I don't know what to believe. And I just know that if I keep just moving forward, I'll be okay. That's not what I believe at all. No, no, I know. But I, no, I believe that the soul wasn't like, you that's believe, what I hope. That's what I believe. You believe our baby's still waiting for us. I hope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I hope that's true. I can't, I don't know if that's necessarily what I believe, but I do hope that's true. But I just know that I need to keep moving forward. Well, I mean, if you don't believe it, though, how much, how hope? Because well, it's I, like okay, I believe, that. which is good. It's fine. I don't dwell on it though. Like I, I, I make an answer that makes sense in my mind, and then I move forward. Okay. So yeah, I'm good. <sighs> that was, but that that wasn't as bad as I thought. I guess I cried once. Mm-hmm. You told a lot more of that story though than I thought you would. Eh. Like you told all of the mutual experiences. Sorry. And then your own. You could have shared it. I was trying. You're like, no, but wait, no, no. Well, because <laughs> I was trying to like bask in the moment for a second. It's fine. But yeah, you wanted me to open up and share my experience. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Done. Did it. <laughs> um. So, okay, well, I guess we'll lighten it up now. We'll, we'll talk about something a little nicer or a Thank little more what? comedic. So oh, you um, did plan something. Okay. I did. And I didn't plan it. I was like either going to do it at the beginning or the end. And I think this is the... Well, you came up with what to discuss. Yeah, so this is toward, what are we discussing? This is towards the end. So I think it's... I don't want to call you out right on the podcast in front of 150,000 people. <laughs> no. Why? No. Do you never... Flush the freaking toilet. I do too. When you go to get in the shower. Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Okay. So here's the thing. And I've always told you. I've always told you. That I said, like, all right, look, here's the thing. All right. The thing is, I only fail to flush if I'm getting ready to take a shower. But that's so gross. Just flush. Only. No, but it's flawless otherwise. Here's the thing. It's because I turn the shower on to start heating up because it takes our shower forever. It really does. It's up. actually annoying. But So I turn the shower on. It's heating up. I go to the bathroom because, you know, I don't want to shower. In the, I don't want to pee in the shower. That's gross. So I, I go to the bathroom. I, I'm getting excited. It's the shower. I see the warmth starting to come out. I see it. It's coming. So I get all excited and I forget to flush the toilet. You do this every day though. Every day. Yes. But it's only because of that. It's because I'm a dog (laughs) and I see it and I get excited and I just get up and go. Completely forget what you were doing. Yeah. That's, and you do this every day for five years that I've known you. But to be honest, like, it could be so much worse. Actually, that's not true. Because even when we first started dating, you only had a bathroom in your room. It wasn't a shower. So yeah. you, you would flush. It's a, it's a new then, development. It is. It's been <laughs> since, well, you know, you've done it since the apartments. Yeah. Since we've lived together. Yeah, it was, it, it's just because there is a shower within view. Like, of the toilet because I, I grew when i was growing up like i couldn't see the shower from the toilet it was like in a stall next to it so this didn't happen at home so we need one of those fancy bathrooms that have like the water closet and then the shower is outside the water closet so you have to stand up and then like walk through a doorway to... i mean at this point i don't know how much of a how much good that's gonna do it's a habit now i'm just i need to i'm gonna give you a shot oh my god just flush the toilet how bad is that for you you could flush it like a freaking grown it's not like you have to go plunge it every time but no but it's gross you just leave your piss but you you're gross you do pee in the shower so does 75 percent of humanity and that's fine (laughs) but 
don't shit on my problems. Just just think about that it. That is many... a problem. That is so gross. It's not gross. You, when you do it while I'm in the shower, it's gross. No, because I pee in the drain. Anyway, by the way, it's your bad. shower, it doesn't matter. You're showering with soap and water. So like you pee, you clean it all off anyway. The soap hits the thing you just peed on. I still don't want it. And it disinfects everything. It's clean. Imagine I find how it many a match 75% of people do it, right? So imagine how many showers and hotels you've been in where people have just pissed in the shower. Well, here's the thing. Also, they don't clean the hotel remotes. That's gross. When I worked in a hotel, they did. You clean the shower? Yes. Oh, nice. So, I have to think that some of the showers get cleaned. I have to Some believe of that. The showers get and I, and in my mind, I'm the lucky one who always gets the rooms that get cleaned. So I, I'm, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm in denial. Yeah, you are very much in denial. My on showers that one. are clean. <laughs> no, they're not. Yes, they they never clean them. They never clean them. But no, like this is gross, man. Like just freaking flush. Like it's not that hard. It's really not. It's just a habit now. Sorry. I'm going to break it. I'm going to get you a shock collar for your wrist. And every time you did it, like, I am not a dog. You will not treat me like a dog. <laughs> Don't be a dog. You just, you just put your likeness to a dog and then said, I'm not a dog. Don't treat me like a dog. But also, I'm like a dog and I see something and I go. <laughs> Pick, make up your mind. <laughs> you walked right into that one. Because now you don't know what to say. No, I don't know what to say because you're a jerk. I'm not a jerk. You just don't know it. You you like you literally compared yourself to a dog, and then five minutes and then later, asked you not to treat me like a dog. <laughs> no, I don't want to be treated like a dog. Just you said, because you, no, okay. just because I'm a dog. You said I act like a dog, and then five that minutes later, that doesn't mean I'm going to respond. And then you're and to then, you be treating me like one. No, treat others the way you would be treated. Do you want to be treated oh, like a dog? Wait, so that means that I don't have to flush anymore either? Like, I can just not flush and be like, it's all right? I mean, that's your choice. I'm not going to flush it for you. You will if you have to go. Or are you just going to pee on my pee and then walk away? Because that would just... that would, Probably. That's, that is so gross. That is... You are a... You are a... <laughs> you will never allow that to happen. You are a trash panda. That is so gross. Only if I'm going to shower. I flush the <sighs> toilet otherwise. It's not a choice. Yeah, but the problem is when you get out of the shower, you don't flush it. You just walk away. <laughs> that was one time. It's every time. No, it's not. You do not flush on a regular basis. If you if you if you get in the shower, you do not flush when you get out of the shower. Because I didn't pee. Literally every night you'll pee before you go in the shower, get in the shower, wash off, get out, take your contacts out, brush teeth. And go lay in bed and play your little bingo game. And I'll walk in there and be like, what the fuck is this? What he doesn't know is that I don't pee after the shower. Right. I do know that. I don't wipe my sanitary area with my towel. I will dry myself off and then I will go sit on the toilet and wipe my butt with toilet paper to appropriately dry my sanitary area. Quit calling it your sanitary area. That's weird. Wipe my pussy? Oh God, <laughs> no! Your no no square or my special area or my even genitals. Sanitary area is better I don't than know. than but, what did you call it? Put in the comments below what you <laughs> think that area should be called. What did you call it? The square? The no no square. You oh no! You can't touch me there. This is my no no square. You've never heard that? No. That was a song you learned in school. It was like. Oh, no, you can't touch me there. This is my no-no square. I guess for girls, it's a no-no triangle. <laughs> but uh, And so the square is referring to your square-shaped penis? No, well, rectangle, but for me, it's like a... Anyway, we're just, this is going a weird mm. path. Anyway, um, thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Please make sure that you do all the things because it's freaking free and why not? It helps us. And apparently, people like our feet. And apparently, you guys that are watching on YouTube love our feet. If you're watching on YouTube, freaking subscribe already. What are you doing? And uh, other than that, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. Later. <laughs>